Hi, I'm Chip, and today's video is about how to diagnose and, and take the steps to fix your dryer. Stick around and we'll uh, get right to it. Okay, in this uh, video we're going to show you how to diagnose any problems your dryer might have and the steps to take to fix them. And the easiest way to do this is to cover the common symptoms you might have when your dryer's not working. So, perhaps your dryer won't come on, or your dryer won't heat, or the drum won't turn, the dryer won't turn off. There's times when your dryer element keeps glowing when the door's open, and your dryer might make a noise. And there's also times when your dryer might, uh, uh, the drum might might turn for a few minutes. It, it, it's working fine, and then uh, then it, it goes off. So we'll cover all these in uh, step by step. Okay, you might uh, have a customer, and she says, "Well, my dryer won't come on." So the first thing you want to do is you want to check the power. Does it have power? Does it have the correct power? So you would use your multimeter to see if the uh, if the if it's an electric dryer to see if it has 240 volts across. The outside power terminals and you can see that in the in this next uh, uh, clip here so you want to use your your multimeter set on um, uh, AC voltage and uh, this is the one I use uh, uh, on my ha on my service calls so you would take your uh, your leads and um, you you open the power cover and you look at the uh, where the, the cord the power cord comes into the dryer and you have three leads the center one is neutral and the outer are hot so you you uh, jump your your leads across the two outside ones and you should read 240 volts or, or pretty close to that that way you'll know it's getting the correct voltage so then if you do have 240 volts across the, the two outside terminals then you would check from the center to each outside and make sure that that each outside checked against the center terminal will have two uh, 120 volts across so there are times when you would have 240 volts but not uh, 120 volts across each each terminal. Okay, in this clip you can see where we, we check the center to one of the outside uh, terminal blocks or terminal connections and then uh, from the center to the next and we should have 120 volts across each one of those uh, contacts. Okay, uh, if it does if it doesn't have power it may have just half the power it needs it so it doesn't have the correct power so you want to go uh, and see if one of the circuit breakers is open uh, a 240 volt system is going to have uh, two uh, circuit breakers 120 volts each so you need to make sure that both of them are on so at this point you'd go to uh, the customer's uh, uh, circuit panel and, and check and make sure that all the uh, the the 240 volt breakers are on there'll be two breakers either connected together or they could be separate a lot of times i find uh, customers houses have uh, uh, dryer breakers on the outside of the house separate from the main box okay the next thing i check is uh, is a door switch if the door switch is defective the dryer won't come on so you open the dryer door and you and you you check the 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 uh the door switch it, you hear a click if you do if it uh, it's probably working if it doesn't click you can always uh, take your multimeter and and do a continuity continuity check on it which is an internal check you'd have to take part of the dryer apart and these are typical uh, uh, dryer door switches there's a, a GE on the left uh, Samsung on the top and a, a Whirlpool on the, on the right Okay, now if you have a, a gas dryer, uh, you have to check the power on it. That's going to be 120 volts. Make sure it has uh, 120 volts going to the receptacle. And, uh, sometimes, if uh, you know, in an older house, the uh, the wall receptacle may be defective, and it, it may need need some attention. And of course, this is what a, a typical American uh, 120 volt uh, wall out outlet looks like. If you're in Europe. Uh, you won't have a 120 volt system in me 240 or 230 I'm not sure what you use over there this is what you'll see in the United States also if your customer has a G or a hot point type dryer and it won't come on um, a lot of times it's just the timer knob is, has cracked and it it feels like it's turning but it's not it, it's uh, slipping on that timer post and it 
it's, it's stuck on off and uh, the, the customer thinks he's turning it on and it, it's not coming on. And this is what a typical GE knob looks like. And if you turn it over where the D slot is, it's usually right in one of those corners right there. Uh, they've made the, this is a newer one, it's got a, a metal ring ar ar around it and a per, it mitigates that, it, that knob cracking there. It's a pretty common uh, uh, problem. And the customer always thinks, you know, they feel stupid that, 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 that this has happened to them, but it just happens. Now, once you've uh, exhausted all the external checks that you can make on the machine and, and it still won't come on, then you have to uh, do some disassembly to be able to, to check some internal components of the machine. And the uh, uh, first thing I look for is the belt broken. If it's a model that has an idler pull, uh, pulley tension switch, the tension switch might be bad. Or does the drum move move freely and without noticeable resistance? Then the belt might be broken. It's an idler pulley tension switch defective, and you can check that with uh, doing a continuity check with uh, with your multimeter. And a continuity check is pretty easy. You you just uh, take you you turn your multimeter to ohms uh, and and check across the two terminals to see if you're uh, getting continuity with the switch. And you look for this symbol on your multimeter. It'll it'll be the ohm. And this is the, what uh, the uh, tensioner switch uh, looks like uh, on most models. You uh, you just have to check from uh, there's the pin sticking out there, and there's just one on 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 the bottom. And you can uh, you check the continuity across those two pins when and 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 hit the micro switch to make it. Uh, work okay the next thing I check is a low limit uh, thermal fuse uh, does the thermal fuse pass the continuity check that's how you're going to check it anyway so the low limit thermal fuse is found on the blower side of the of the dryer it's not going to be on the element side it's on the on the blower side and these are the uh, as an example of a, a low limit thermal fuse they're usually long and white and there's there's the same fuse one hooked up with the wire one not Here's another uh, example of one that you might have. These are usually found in Samsung dryers, LGs, uh, anything other than the Whirlpool. Then you want to see if the start switch is defective. Does the start switch pass a continuity check? You know, if you put, if you, you can push the start switch or some uh, G models have a turn to start switch, it could be defective. You have to disassemble the, the top and, and check for continuity on that. And these are examples of uh, typical t start switches from left to right. Uh, Whirlpool uses uh, the left one, and there's also I've seen uh, that center switch on Whirlpools, and the, the those are two push to start switches. And the one on the right is a, a General Electric uh, twist to start. It's a really a poor design. Okay, if all of these check out, then you you may have a defective timer. So. Uh, you would uh, take the timer out of the, the console top and turn it over and uh, you'd have to take the metal plate off of the, the back of the timer to examine the points. And here's your typical timer. Uh, on the left is the, t the top side of it and on the bottom I've taken the plate off and I uh, see the, the red arrow, arrows are, show, are, are pointing to the points. And depending on what style dryer you have, you may have uh, another uh, set of points on the uh, right hand side of that purple wheel but just examine those points to make sure that they're not burnt okay if your dryer comes on and won't heat that is the power correct is there 240 volts across the two outside terminals of the, of the terminal block and is there 120 volts across each outside terminal of the center terminal so the dryer may come on but the element may not come on if you have only one side of the, the terminal block energized. And again, here's a, a picture of the terminal block. And you check uh, across the two outside uh, terminals for uh, 240 volts. And then you would check, uh, okay, then you would check uh, across the center and the outside, and then across the center to the outside uh, on the other, other side of the terminal block. Then you should uh, examine the element wires. Are they okay? Are they uh, are they 
connected tightly or they're not burnt or broken. I've uh, opened a dryer and I've seen this before. You can see in this uh, picture here where the uh, the uh, element wire just burnt, burned off I, for no apparent reason. But it's a common occurrence in some of the older uh, Whirlpool type machines. Next you want to check uh, <clears throat> it, whether the high limit thermal fuse has been blown and uh, does it pass a continuity check. The high limit thermal fuse is going to be on uh, on the elements uh, side of the dryer. It's, it's going to be the last uh, component as the air goes into the uh, drum of the of the dryer. And you see here this is a, a common uh, thermal fuse, high limit thermal fuse. This one is rated, uh, if you can barely see it in the pictures, for uh, 309 degrees. And they have a variety of styles for these in, in different uh, uh, machines. And you can see here on the on the left is a GE and the next one's a GE and then there's two Whirlpool style. Now the next component you want to check is your high limit thermostat. And it's going to be uh, located on the lower end of the element uh, shroud. And you, you can check it for continuity across it to see if it's uh, uh, in working order. And here's a, a, a typical uh, Whirlpool style, style 250 degree uh, thermal uh, thermostat. And here's a variety of others that you'll find in different machines. Um, all machines have, have these particular components in them. Okay, and right here I should uh, explain these numbers on these thermostats. The uh, 250 to 80 degrees, the, the, the 250 is the limit that the, the little compound bar inside the thermostat will, will open at 250 degrees. And then it will cool off 80 degrees or it will, uh, uh, it will uh, close again when the, when the thermostat cools back down to 170 degrees. So... The, it, the limit's 250 and the range on it is 80 degrees. And now you want to know, is the heating element defective? Does the heating element pass a continuity check? Or is it grounded to the frame? You can have uh, both conditions and you you need to, uh, if they fail, you have to uh, uh, replace the element. Here's an example of a uh, Whirlpool style element. You can see the top side of it. Uh, at the bottom uh, left are the, uh, the terminal connections and you can see the coils on the back side of it. And here's a variety of different uh, style elements you're going to find in different types of machines. Uh, this one uh, in some Kenmore machines. Uh, this is for a, a Samsung machine. They have several different styles and varieties of elements but they all are all have the uh, the coil wires on the inside uh, and that's what heats up and it supplies the hot air into your dryer drum. Also if your dryer comes on but doesn't heat your timer could be defective. So there's uh, there are points inside the timer that uh, that can be burnt and not making contact that keeps the element from coming on. As, uh, the timer could be you know the timer could keep the machine from coming on and it can also keep the machine from heating. So you, depending on what symptom you have, you, the timer needs to be checked in both cases. Here's a picture of, of, of your timer. Uh, and uh, here's the internal uh, uh, timer again. And the points that are indicated by the red arrow are usually the uh, points that, uh, that operate the, the element. Now, if all these other, if all these components have been checked and uh, and nothing's found defective and you can't figure out why this this uh, dryer is not heating most likely it's going to be a defective motor switch it's rare but I, I've seen it happen on several occasions and you'll have to uh, change the motor switch because what happens when that motor when the motor starts it's not supplying um, it's not supplying power to the element until the centrifugal uh, switch throws out and you can see where this lever, this uh, arrow is when the centrifugal switch uh, kicks off the start windings and it, it, it energizes the, the element uh, coils 
if that motor switch is uh, is defective you're not going to get power to your element okay now if you have a, a, a gas dryer uh, you need to check uh, these components in the in the order that they're listed here it's you need to check the low limit thermal fuse you need to check it for continuity now, if the low limit thermal fuse is blown on an electric dryer nothing works it won't come on but if the same fuse is blown on a gas model the motor will turn but the uh, the flame won't ignite and you also need to check the igniter does it glow and then check the electric eye uh, you have to check continuity from with it and uh, uh, the coils and to check the coils you have like, one coil that has two posts on it and one that has three you would check on the two posts you check for continuity across the two the two uh, terminals and on the uh, three uh, terminal one you check from the center to each outside one for continuity so if your dryer's drum won't turn is the belt broken is the belt missing from around the drum or does it lift right off uh, uh, is it broken when you pull on it when you lift the lid, lid up on the or the top of the cabinet off can you see a broken belt sitting there or, you know it's easy to, to, to figure out uh, if the dryer's uh, belt is broken because you know the, the drum turns really easily so sometimes the belt is uh, it has come off the drive pulley and the drive pulley may be broken if, if there's a lot of slack in the belt when you lift it lift up on on the top of the if you lift the belt off the top of the drum you can uh, you can have a lot of slack it's most likely if it's come off the drive pulley okay if the motor pulley is defective yeah, sometimes these uh, aluminum motor uh, pulleys will wear out and the end of them just break off so you kind of look in inside the, the dryer uh, with a flashlight you know when you take the front of it off or the back of it off depending on which kind of dryer you have and uh, you can uh, inspect the, the dry pulley make sure the V grooves uh, like seen in this picture aren't worn out it usually breaks right there where the where the uh, the nut part of it is it breaks off and the, the belt can no longer uh, stay on that on that drive pulley okay and sometimes if uh, if the drum doesn't turn you need to check the see if your idler pulley is defective if the idler pulley is intact and it moves freely on a shaft it, it, it's, it could be okay uh, is the belt correctly positioned around the drive pulley and the motor pulley or has the belt slipped off and it's caught you know between the uh, the motor pulley uh, axle and, and the housing now here's some uh, typical uh, variety of, of idler pulleys the one there on the with the, the long steel bent rod on it, it comes out of a GE and the, these others come out of uh, various styles of dryers a lot of times those uh, those plastic wheels will seize up and the belt still runs on it but it'll wear a groove in, the, in that uh, in that wheel uh, so what if your dryer runs just a few minutes and quits you know yeah the first thing you check is the door latch is it defective uh, you know is it maybe uh, being activated by the, the door uh, close hitting the door or something so if the door latch is weak it could it could open the door enough to to, to uh, open that door switch uh, so you check the door switch and the latch first and here's a typical latch you know they come in a variety of styles and of course that's a uh, a whirlpool style door switch right there those are the, the two that you would check you'd hope that this is the problem because uh, when usually when a dryer comes on it stops and then you can go back to it a few minutes later push the start button it starts again then uh, that's a that's a bad uh, situation there so if your dryer won't turn off is the power correct you have 120 volts on each side of the power lug because it may not turn off because it's not getting uh, power to the element so when the motor starts and, and and it sends power to the element power goes through the element back to the timer to run to run the uh, the timer motor so again you want to uh, check your uh, your power lug to make sure you have uh, the right power coming into it and if your your power checks out then you you want to uh maybe uh set your timer at a, a particular time or make a mark on it with a fountain pen or something or a pencil 
and to and to observe it to make sure your your timer's advancing. You know, if if your dryer's heating but the, the timer's not advancing, uh, more than likely the, the little timer motor's, motor's defective and needs to be replaced, and probably the whole the whole uh, uh, timer should be replaced. Now, <clears throat> and like I said before, if there's no power going to the element, a little timer motor is not going to be powered. So uh, I've had a customer uh, complain. She turned her dryer on at 7 a.m. She came back at at at, at 4 or uh, 4:30 when she got off, and her dryer was still running. Uh, it's because she turned it on, and, and the uh, the little motor on the timer wasn't advancing. So so it stayed on all day, blowing cold air on her clothes. I guess they uh, they dried, but uh, they the, the uh, dryer never turned off. Okay, another uh, uh, common problem that, that happens is uh, a customer call me and, and say, my dryer, I noticed my dryer element glows. I've opened, I opened the door and, the, and the, the element's glowing. I can see it glowing. It's supposed to turn off. What's going on there? So uh, a condition like that, uh, what has happened is the element uh, coil has broken or has ground and, and is grounded against the, uh, the, uh, the frame and one thing that you can check for is as long as the timer is on on one of the settings where it should be on uh it doesn't the motor doesn't have to be turning the, the, just as long as the timer is on and the, the element points are closed then that that element's going to be energized and glowing you can see it this is a con condition right here it's glowing with no with no air going across it and hopefully your high limit thermo uh, thermostat down there will will uh, will uh, kick off and not not start a fire in your home. So uh, this is a common condition, and the way you you check for that is uh, you check uh, across the uh, you would check across uh, the the uh, element terminal and the frame to see if it's grounded. So what if your dryer is making a noise? Uh, is it making a squealing noise or a thump? Squealing noises are usually something that's caught between the drum and the seals or, the, or it's going to be the belt rubbing on a frozen idler pulley. A lot of times I've I found screws or coins or uh, other metal objects uh, and even rocks caught between the, the, uh, the, uh, the drum and the, and the seals. And of course here's a picture of the uh, the idler pulleys again they could be uh, frozen up and the, and the belt would be uh, rubbing against uh, either the, the, the frozen plastic or, or the metal part and, and the dryer would just squeal like a pig so uh, you'd have to replace the idler pulley okay and uh, here's a, uh, are a few examples of, of drum rollers if you're if, if the dryer's making a thunking noise you probably have a flat spot on one of these rollers it may have seized up or the rubber has, has uh, worn away from it and they may need replacing. So some dryers have uh, two rollers in the back and, and then they may rub on a felt seal on the front and uh, some Samsung uh, type has uh, four rollers, two in the front, two in the back, they would need replacing. And if your dryer has a, a, a severe rattling noise somewhere uh, around the uh, around the motor area or the blower area. It's probably gonna be a, a, blower, a broken blower wheel or a, a failed uh, motor bearing. And uh, that way you'd have to take the, the blower out and replace the wheel. Uh, uh, I find these on G hot point type machines usually. They uh, didn't engineer the, the blower wheel very well and it's usually stripped or broken uh, right near the, the uh, motor shaft. Okay, now here's the uh, situation we had before. We uh, talked about maybe the, uh, the the door latch or the or the uh, or the door switch was, was out. But sometimes your dryer motor is defective. What's happening is uh, it heats up, and the uh, the thermal cutoff on the motor shuts the motor off to keep keep it from burning uh, burning up. Uh, it needs to be replaced. Uh, you can open the, the, the cabinet and if you smell a, a, a burning electric smell, that's probably the motor. Another uh, symptom of, of that is when you push the start switch and it, 
the motor hums real real loud before it, it starts to spin up then the motor the motor's gone you need to replace it uh, that's all there you can do to it you, you can't change that that thermal switch you may as well uh, replace the whole motor uh, that's about all you can do to it okay there's one component that I didn't uh, I go over in the in the slideshow and it was it's this component here and it's called a, uh, this is called a cycling thermostat it's found on your blower usually right next to your uh, to the the long thermal fuse uh, and this uh, thermostat is built just like the high-end thermostat however it's got uh, two more uh, posts over the center and these are connected to a, a coil that if you have a temperature selection on your on your dryer like uh, high heat medium heat low heat uh, this is what controls that it sends uh, power to a little coil in there that heats up and and, and makes this uh, thermostat kick off sooner than the 155 degrees it, it normally would but knowing that uh, if you're using a test set to test this thing if you use a, if you turn this to ohms and you use the audible feature you uh, you'll have a problem testing this because it will it will it will test a, a, across the uh, the thermostat okay but the coil for some reason I used to know I've, it escapes me now but it will not it will not uh, give you an audible reading across the, the coil it won't give you an audible reading across coils in the gas dryer either so in that case you can still test it but you need to turn off the audible feature and you need to go with the uh, the digital display and you can see there I think you can see it will give you an accurate reading so and it, this is true with the uh, thermistors I think there's a diode in those and it won't it won't give you an audible reading so you, you may think the component is bad if you're not using if you're not looking at the digital uh, display so uh, I don't know why I forgot to to include this in the internal check but when you're checking the components inside your dryer look for the for the uh, cycling thermostat and be sure to check the continuity across all four of those those uh, posts anyway the way YouTube works is this if you like and, and subscribe to the channel and, and make comments uh, the channel gets uh, more noticed by the YouTube algorithm and it makes it available to more people that are looking for this kind of content. I appreciate it because it makes the, the channel grow and and, uh, and it moves me up the, up the search list for people that are looking to fix their appliances. And so I greatly appreciate you liking and subscribing to my channel and other people will appreciate it too. And uh, if you have any symptoms that we didn't cover here and your dry is giving you a hard time just uh, contact me in the comments and uh, I'll get with you and, and I'll try to diagnose it you know through email or whatever but uh, I think we've covered almost everything that could possibly happen to a dryer but I learn every day so you may have something uh, special that I, I don't I've, I've never encountered but anyway I hope you liked uh, my, my video and uh, I'll see you on the next one.